Please rewind this cassette. All right. Brad Pitt reuniting with Quentin Tarantino in the final film, The Movie Critic. All right. My boy Brad, he just won a lawsuit with Angelina uh, with their chateau, I believe. Uh, going on him. Um, but anyways, yeah, the movie, the movie critic. Wait, wait. Apparently it's about... Wait, so what? he won a lawsuit for their winery, is what you're saying? The winery, yeah, my bad, yeah. But it's a chateau, <laughs> so wait. Because I thought there was stuff coming out that he, like, he held her and the children hostage on an airplane like he was Liam Neeson or something? <laughs> Did he do that? That's that a, would be fun. That's imagine, a movie right imagine there. Imagine Brad Pitt holding children... And Angelina, I don't know. That's been some that apparently he's a drunk, which owning a winery doesn't help an argument against that. Um, <laughs> I've heard that about Brad forever is that he's got like serious drinking problems. But c continue. What's the movie critic about? Um, so apparently what Quentin said is that there is this porno rag that he would like apparently read. He didn't read any others, but he read this one. I'll take his word for that. Uh, when he was a young, a wee lad for his jobs. And in this porno rag there was a movie critic who was very snarky and apparently from what quentin said had good taste and he said this is what the movie is going to be based on but so we don't know if brad's going to be playing that character um safe to assume probably i hope so um some people are speculating that in the novel of once upon a time in hollywood that cliff booth i believe that's his character's yeah, name cliff booth yeah yeah cliff booth uh Apparently in the novel was a huge movie fan and he's does a lot about movies and people are hoping that maybe this is the same character. I doubt it, but I, I don't know. That, that that would be cool though. But that's that's what the article says so far. Um I'm gonna watch it regardless. I love Brad. Quentin loves Brad. QCU. Brad loves Brad. Uh Angelina does not like Brad. And yeah. <laughs> Wait, did you say did you say the QTU? Yeah, the QCU. The, the, the QCU. <laughs> the Quentin Tarantino universe. Everybody's I'm all for like, it. Well, Brad, I, I I, mean, I don't want to say I'm disappointed because I love Brad Pitt, but the, like, if he's the main character and it's like, okay, so you're just using Brad Pitt again. Like, I, it's just with Tarantino, I hate that with some of his recent movies, not all of them, but sometimes he just goes with like an A-list or like a Leo or Brad, and he doesn't, like, introduce us to a different actor. Like, Christoph Waltz, for instance, like, we didn't know who that guy was. Or even Sam Jackson really wasn't that famous before he was in Pulp Fiction. Tim Roth got propelled by Tarantino a lot more. Um, Steve Buscemi and Reservoir Dogs. So I'm upset in that sense. I kind of was hoping he would work with, like, a new actor that he hasn't had as a lead yet in my head like i was so i was thinking in my head like an adam driver or somebody like that some young, like a young and comer right now that he might give the lead role yeah, to. shark foot yeah, shark, shark foot. foot but i don't <laughs> mind though if it's brad pitt either though he i mean he really wasn't the lead in inglorious bastards because that was an ensemble movie like he's out of the movie for like a good hour of it at a point and uh he's really not he's kind of the lead of once upon a time really he's a co-lead but he's in the movie a lot but this would be the first time if he is the movie critic. I don't know what this movie is going to be. I have this vision in my head that there's going to be scenes where like he's sitting in a movie theater and talking to the camera about the movie or he's writing down. Like, I wonder if Tarantino is going to use it as an excuse to write like essays about 70s films. Uh, That'd be nifty. In a script. Because otherwise, but... why would you make a movie about a film critic? Like, what's the name? Unless it's like um, The Player or something where there's some murder mystery that happens relating to this film critic and, and it's a film about movies with a critic in it like maybe he gets caught up in a plot line but because he's a film critic he thinks about it from that perspective i liked your first idea and i hope he goes with that but he probably won't um what i will say i'm disappointed with though while i am glad we have brad i thought you know there's rumors it was going to be about pauline kale or it was going to be kind of like an you know an insert for Pauline Kale, and I kind of wanted him to have a, a female lead for this. So it's just because it would have like shaken things up a little bit. That's a but, good call. He hasn't had a female lead since Kill Bill. Mm -hmm. All right, Not really much you can really go with that. It's just kind of an I wish, but I mean, Brad's still great. 
I'm there regardless. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's it's weird because he always does genre stuff too. Like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, even has genre stuff. Like it has violence and stuff. He hasn't yet made a movie where he doesn't do that. So I'm just curious about how it fits into this film. You know what I mean? Like that's the yeah. Because when I saw so... Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I was surprised how like sweet the film was. And how non like violent it was, and then the last twenty minutes happens. You're like, oh, okay, it's a Tarantino movie. Hmm. Uh, I think he earned that though. He earned that last twenty. I, minutes. I'm not knocking yeah, it. I, I like the last twenty minutes. I'm just saying he hasn't made a movie yet uh, where he doesn't at least lean into something. Typically in a crime genre, or revenge genre. Um, so I'm just curious. I think that's the thing people aren't talking about this movie. Everyone's concerned about what critic it is. But no one's really talking about like what kind of film is it? The movie critic. That's I guess because we don't know much about it. But you were, you know, you just to kind of bring up this tired conversational piece. But do you really think this is going to be QT's last movie? You had a good take on this a while back. What what were you saying about that? That it's his last movie. Yeah, I think it's his last movie. You mm -hmm. think so, based off his podcast? I don't think he would lie about mm -hmm. it. He's lied about movies he's going to make that he doesn't make. But, I mean, he said that he has a TV show written one season. Mm -hmm. And then he says he has other books he wants to do. And he's already released two books, which he always said he was going to do. He said he was going to write plays and books. So he did that. He's released books. He hasn't done a play yet. And he's podcasting. So... I don't know. I'm thinking this guy's 60. He's like 60 years old now. And he does a podcast with Roger Avery. He's married. He has a home in Israel and in LA. He has a kid now, which I never thought he was going to do. He never had a kid or got married. Um, And then, I don't know. He says it's the last movie. I'm just inclined to believe him. I think he's just going to stop making movies and do other things for the next like 10 years. And then I think he'll probably die at like 73 on a toilet or something. <laughs> he goes out like Elvis. Yeah, I mean, if Tarantino see, lives the... to be old, I'd be shocked. So, but Here's the real question. Nobody's asking this. How many N-bombs are going to be in it? That's that, what I want to know. That's the real question. If there was a disappointment at Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I have to say, was just <laughs> the lack of, you know, racial slurs throughout. <laughs> Yeah, don't I mean, cry in front of the Mexicans. That's about the best you get as Mexican, which yeah. you know, really isn't that insulting. You know, uh, so. destroy. What do you think? What do you think? Oh, uh, I was thinking uh, it'd be pretty funny if it was like Forrest Gump with a movie critic. Oh, they're there for every movie event. <laughs> <laughs> Life is like a box of chocolates. Oh, you mean he's just a retard? He's just a bad oh, critic. Yeah, he's a retard movie critic. <laughs> That would be funny. He'd be I mean, commenting on you critics. Saw Quentin Tarantino from a distance. Yeah, but Brad Pitt playing one. He's the yeah. most handsome. He's the most handsome I... guy, and he's a brilliant. He's only a movie critic because he's handsome. Yeah, like, that's why yeah. he gets yeah. the job. But he's clearly mentally disabled. <laughs> but he's there for every movie event, like Forrest Gump. He's a historical figure. He's he's zelling his way through all of history. He just gives all like the worst reviews to the greatest movies. <laughs> he's like Armand White. <laughs> <laughs> that guy Marty, I heard he went on to make some good movies that people like. <laughs> I didn't like Goodfellas. Yeah, I didn't like Marty's movies. I didn't like Boxcar Bertha. <laughs> but you know what would be the funny part? He liked all of Lynch's movies. <laughs> yeah, that'd be the kicker. Yeah, like, he he, like he related deeply to Elephant Man. <laughs> I cried during Elephant Man. I went to go see the Elephant Man. Now I'm just going to be disappointed if we don't get this. <laughs> and it's Brad Pitt. You have to remember that too. It's Brad Pitt yeah. doing this. <laughs> well, it's just because it's his last movie. I wish he would have swung for someone like like we wouldn't have expected like. Like, because he's worked with Brad. If it had just been like how he's talking about Tom Cruise at one point for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, it would just been cool if he had just grabbed some actor he hasn't worked with. And we'd be like, holy shit. Like PTA working with Leo right now. It's like I've been out on PTA for a few years, but I'm like, OK, I see Leo looks like a homeless guy. 
what's going on here. It's another literally me movie. That's yeah, what it's like, going to be. <laughs> uh, he, you know, it makes me, I've heard PTA wants to make a more commercial film, which I predicted a long time ago um, that he was going to sell out eventually. So <laughs> I'm hoping. So I don't know. I'm excited about this movie. It's QT. It's just it being his last film. There's a weird. Because Once Upon a Time in Hollywood felt almost like a goodbye movie in a lot of ways. Um, watching it, it felt like an old man movie looking back on the past. So yeah, where do you go from there? Yeah, it's curious if he I, I my hope is like I said, I hope it really is just him writing kind of funny monologues and observations about movies and so on. I think that could be a very entertaining movie. Um, I, I don't have I, I mean, honestly, I hope it is just a film that is like I hate to say it if he kind of made more of a comedy than he's ever made because <laughs> his movies are all really funny. If he leaned into that a lot more, I would I wouldn't have an issue with that too. I think that I think the the idea of making a film out of film critic is comedic in nature. You know, but it might also have some Barton Fink, Charlie Kaufman adaptation kind of energy too. Who knows? It might be that kind of film as well. I want like a race grand Grace Randolph like analog for the movie. Like she's in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's just gonna be the critic with John Lovett. It's gonna, it stinks. Well, 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 well. Yeah. <laughs> just a thumbs up, thumbs down and shit. It's just going to be. Well, that's the thing. I know Quentin loves a lot of those old critics. I've read a lot of them. I hate a lot of like, the. I mean, I like a lot of obviously old journalism and magazines, but a lot of the old critics that are like revered, I go back and read a lot of their stuff and they're just contrarian hacks. It's really not like some of them are good writers. But the takes that some of those critics had back then are fucking insane. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. They hate genre movies. They're all trying to find some sociological angle. Everybody has like a... They're way more obsessed with violence in movies back then. Like it means something. Explains Marty then. Yeah, because <laughs> now it's now we watch some of these movies and we're like, whatever. We don't think about it that way. But like so much of the discussion back then was about the the meaning of these movies and if they're good or bad like if you should even make a movie like this and that's just an insane conversation to have in like the 2000s you know i've been wanting to go purchase some of pauline kale's books uh her books are pretty expensive now they don't make they don't they don't reprint a lot of them yeah, one's going for like my, 60 my friend blood money that's not his real name obviously but uh, we used to have late night phone calls and he would read Pauline Kael reviews and I would fall asleep while he was reading them to me. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. And then I'd pass out and hang up and he'd call me back and be like, hey, hey, what happened? <laughs> I'd be like I fell asleep and he was like, I was in the middle of reading this review of Network. Oh, you can keep going.